Hello, McFarland Lutheran Church, and welcome to our Good Friday service. If you haven't already, you're invited to check out the resource that Pastor Tim and I put together called Holy Week at Home. You can find it on the homepage of our church's website and join in to our Holy Week services. You're also invited to join us for our Easter service. It will be here on Facebook Live on Sunday, April 12th at 10 a.m. And it will be recorded and available on our Facebook page uh, later and then also on our main McFarland Lutheran Church website. So I hope you are able to join us for the promise of the resurrection on Sunday. So now I invite you to begin with me our Good Friday service with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The assigned gospel reading for Good Friday is the entirety of chapters 18 and 19, but in this unique and different year, we will only be reading a portion of it. So, a uh, reading from the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming to, up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to, them, said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you? and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now, the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, 
and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. At this point, I will be logging off. You are invited to go back to the main McFarland Lutheran Church Facebook page, and Pastor Tim will join you in a moment for more from John's God. Thank you, Pastor Kelly, for beginning our worship with the prayer of the day and the reading from the Gospel of John. She read through verse 24, and now I will continue with verse 25. After the soldiers had said to one another, Let us not tear Jesus' tunic, but let us cast lot for it. For it. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Passion of Christ, according to John, has a different tone than the other Gospel accounts. In John, Jesus doesn't begin the week as a rock star on Palm Sunday and end as a falling star. Instead, he starts the week in glory and ends up in even greater glory. His hour his moment of glory comes in a scandalous death on a cross. The Gospel of John refuses to portray Jesus as a passive, silent victim at the mercy of forces beyond his control. Rather, John makes it clear that it is the premeditated yet painful plan of Jesus not the schemes of others that leads to his death. He is in charge. This comes as a somewhat of a shock to us that this horrible death has a profoundly hopeful meaning. Jesus' death is ultimately not a defeat, but a triumph. We hear, these hopeful, we hear this hopeful tone in Jesus' last words in John. Woman, here is your son, Jesus says to his mother. Here is your mother, he says to one of his disciples. Jesus acts to create a new community at the foot of his cross. I am thirsty, Jesus cries. Jesus aligns himself with those who hunger and thirst, those in desperate need. It is finished. 
the last words from his lips. Jesus confidently completes God's mission in the world. Dear friends, in this time of global pandemic, economic uncertainty, and home isolation, it is good for us to hear these last words of Jesus and receive them in prayerful silence today. I encourage you to take a break from the news. Take a break later today from the internet and social media. Instead, go on a silent walk in your neighborhood to pray and reflect on these words. Share a simple meal with your family and share your needs, your concerns, your joys with those around you. Let these last words of Jesus wash and settle and soak into the very depths of your heart and soul. Receive them as good news for yourself and for this suffering creation. A couple weeks ago, I saw a New York Times section called The Great Empty. It was a section of the newspaper filled with famous places, photos of famous places around the world that were completely empty because of COVID-19. Famous places like Place de la République in Paris and New York Times Times Square in New York City. These public places completely, completely empty of people. You may have seen local places also completely empty of people. The Capitol Square in Madison, State Street, or our own neighborhoods as we walk around them. These photos were jarring and mournful because they spoke of an absence that our heart feels, the absence of people able to gather publicly. At the same time, there was something amazingly, beautifully poignant in these empty spaces. Good Friday is the time of the great empty. Jesus empties his life in a profound act of love for the world. and the world becomes still. There is surely grief and sadness. The Gospel of John doesn't minimize or negate Jesus or anyone's suffering. Jesus dies a real, horrible death. Yet by this great emptiness, this great emptying love, Victory is won. This is an act of self-sacrifice that will draw all people to Jesus. This is Jesus' hour to reveal God's undying love for the entire universe. Because of this great emptiness, we no longer need to worry about who God is or where we stand with God. God is love for us, steadfast and sure, giving us the peace and hope 
we so desperately need in this hour today. God's love will prevail and bring us all through this time of loss, fear, and uncertainty. On this Good Friday, the great empty of the cross, God speaks a powerful wor word for you and for me. Life. Life out of death. For this wondrous love, dear friends, dear friends, for this wondrous love, let us offer our deepest thanks and praise. Amen. We respond to the gospel on Good Friday with the bidding prayer. I will invite us to a time of prayer for the church, world, and all people in need. There is a time of silence after each invitation. You may offer in that time of silence your own prayer concerns from your heart or aloud. Write them down on a Facebook comment or email us pastors. Then I will pray the petition and end. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the congregation says, Amen. Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all servants of the church and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and Sarah and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those 
who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love you have made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Strengthen all healthcare workers and guide their work in hospitals around the world. Heal the sick and comfort the dying, especially those affected by COVID-19. Free those unjustly deprived of liberty and deliver your word, your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am now ending my Facebook live feed and Chris Malig will very soon be with you as we close our worship on Good Friday in song. It is good to be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit on this day, Good Friday. Please go to the MLC Facebook page and join Chris as we sing together, Were You There? We adore you, O Christ and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed 
the world. Thank you, Pastor Kelly and Pastor Tim, for sharing the reading with us this afternoon and for your message of hope and life as we celebrate Good Friday. As Pastor Tim mentioned, we do continue our service with Were You There? Thank you for joining us this afternoon as we celebrate Good Friday. Have a blessed day and join us 
again on Sunday morning as we celebrate Christ's rising from the tomb at Easter at 10 a.m. God bless you all.